Okay, in this video we're going to look at the example of, of solving a second order differential equation with a piecewise forcing function. And we're going to use the theory of Laplace transforms. So I've included um, a Laplace transform chart on the left hand side of the board, but we'll use some properties that are not listed in this chart. Mostly the Laplace transform of the derivative of a function. Okay. So the first thing that we want to do is rewrite this differential equation as follows. So we'll just copy the left-hand side. So we have y double prime plus 2y prime plus y. And then we're going to write the right-hand side using the unit step function. So I have another video where I define that and find its Laplace transform. So we can do that as follows. So this is e to the t plus the unit step function shifted over uh, to the right by one. And I should say minus that there. Okay, so let's make sure this makes sense. So recall, this is zero up until one, and then it's equal to one. So notice that between zero and one, this guy is zero, just giving us e to the t. And between one and infinity, this thing is one, giving us e to the t minus one, and that's exactly our piecewise function. Okay, so the next thing we can do is apply the Laplace transform. So applying the Laplace transform, we get the Laplace transform of y double prime plus twice the Laplace transform of y prime plus the Laplace transform of y equals the Laplace transform of e to the t minus the Laplace transform of this unit step function uh, shifted over to the right by one unit. Great, now we're going to apply the formula for the Laplace transform of a derivative. So before we do that, I'll, sh I'll point out that in this case, I'm going to set capital Y equal to the Laplace transform of little y for simplicity. So this term is going to become S squared capital Y minus S Y evaluated at zero minus Y prime evaluated at zero. So just recall, that is the formula for the Laplace transform of a second derivative. So I've got a video where I derive this for an arbitrary derivative if you're interested. So next we can have this is plus twice, and now we have S times capital Y, the Laplace transform of little y, minus Y evaluated at zero. And this is the Laplace transform of a single derivative. Okay, great. And then we have this is plus y, the Laplace transform of y. Now we can take the Laplace transform of those known functions and we can use this chart over here. So we use this entry for the first function and then we'll use this entry down here for the second function given the fact that f in this case is just the function one. So in this case, this is gonna give us one over s minus one for e to the t, and it's going to give us a minus e to the minus tau times s, sorry, minus s because tau is 1 over s plus 1. Okay, so that's what we get for the next part. So now the next thing that we can do is simplify the left-hand side of this equation. So I'll do that. Um, kind of quickly using the fact that we have these initial conditions. We have y evaluated at 0 is 1 and we have y prime evaluated, sorry, we have y evaluated at 0 is 3 and y prime evaluated at 0 is negative 1. Okay, so that's going to give us the following. So I'll skip a step and this is going to be s plus 1 squared times capital Y. So notice that's kind of obvious here because here we have s squared times y, 2s times y, and then 1 times y, and obviously we can factor the capital Y out and get the following. Okay, good. And then we have minus 3s and then minus 5 equals 1 over s minus 1 minus e to the minus s over s plus 1. Okay, good. So next we will solve for capital Y. So solving for capital Y gives us the following. So we'll have uh, 3s plus 5 over s plus 1 squared. Great. And then plus 1 over s minus 1, s plus 1 squared. 
good. And then finally, minus e to the minus s over s plus one cubed. Okay, so the next thing I'll do, I will erase the board, I'll bring this equation up to the top, and then we'll get uh, towards the next step of solving uh, this differential equation. Okay, now we're ready to finish off solving this differential equation. So I moved this value of capital Y, which was the Laplace transform of our solution up to the top, and then I've performed partial fraction decomposition on these terms. And so this is a topic from Calculus 2. I have some videos on partial fraction decomposition. I have some videos on partial fraction decomposition, including those for finding the inverse Laplace transform. So I'll let you look at those if you need to. So now what we want to do is find the inverse Laplace transform of capital Y in order to find the solution. So let's see what we can get. So in this case, we have y equals 1 quarter. Now we have s minus 1. So if we look up here, that looks like e to the at. So here we have e to the t. It's e to the at with a equals 1. Good. So next we can do, this is plus 3 halves. And now since we've got something squared in the denominator, that looks like this with t equals 1. Sorry, not t equals 1, n equals 1, so we can put t there. But now notice, it looks like it's been shifted, and it's been shifted to the left. So in this case, we can say this is e to the minus t. Great. Um, now, the next thing that we can do is the following. So this is plus 11 over 4, um, and then we have s plus 1, so this looks like e to the minus t. So that's using this one again with uh, a equals minus 1 in this case. And now we have this guy over here. So notice we've got an e to the s, and so that tells us that we should probably have something like this. Good, and then we also have uh, s plus one cubed in the denominator. So a cube in the denominator says it probably comes from uh, t to the n where n equals two. So notice we're missing a two in the numerator for that to be the case, really a two factorial. So we can add a two in the numerator and a two in the denominator, and that's gonna give us the following. So this will be minus one half. We have this unit step function of t minus 1 involved, and that takes into account this e to the minus s, and it also takes into account this shifting, and now we have t squared. Okay, good. So now that is the final solution.